Tiger Woods turns down as much as $800 million for Live Golf. Tiger Woods turned down an offer that Greg Norman says was, quote, somewhere in that neighborhood of $700 million to $800 million to take part of the Saudi-funded Live Golf series. During an appearance on Fox News with Tucker Carlson that aired Monday night, Norman confirmed what he told the Washington Post in a story two months ago. Norman told the Post in June that the offer was, quote, mind-blowingly enormous. We're talking about high nine digits. Yeah, I think I think the live golf uh, spectacular and the whole topic is worth discussing. I think this is a non-story. I mean, we all know the Saudi playbook here. I mean, live golf in its early days is going to be a massive loss leader to build the tour and the brand. So, sure, you know, let's lay it all out for Tiger because he would be quite a coup. I would actually wonder too if Norman nor because this apparently has occurred before Norman came on as CEO. And I wonder if he's talking out of school here. Uh, you know, and, yeah. and I don't know. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'd like to see him just be quiet. Um, but, you know, I, I, my take. So my the interesting thing for me in terms of the live tournament. So they've done three tournaments so far. Plenty of commentary, some positive, mostly negative. Um, <clears throat> and as we've talked about, my take is that they just need to keep showing up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that's why I think it's important that they've already scheduled the 2023 and 2024 seasons. I mean, this is important for their brand development. But my take on this, the most important data point, is what the PGA has done. And and you, I'm sure you have some thoughts on it. But, I mean, they, they've done so many things that reflect, I mean, they've responded. I mean, they, they've, they've refashioned their schedule. Um, they've added a record to $450 million in prize money. Yeah. Uh, so they refashioned their schedule to make it more convenient for the golfers. Upped prize men money tremendously. Uh, they have set up, and they have three FedEx uh, Cup playoff events that are specifically designed to uh, invite and include only the top players. They've now expanded to eight uh, tour sites on their schedule where uh, you don't you aren't disqualified. There are no cut events. Mm-hmm. So all these things, you know, increased purses, better schedule, smaller fields, no cut events. Who does that sound like? Yeah, that sounds like live I mean, golf, baby. <laughs> I mean, if if uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery, mm-hmm. apparently PGA thinks a whole hell of a lot of live because they're the, trying to. Trying yeah. to do exactly what Liv is saying and doing. And, and just to finish that thought, and I, I think, you know, I think it proves the point that, that Liv had identified some inefficiencies that could be exploited and that, you know, and that, that they had, there was a spot for them to, to come in and try and carve out a tour. I'm also wondering if you're a top golfer on the PGA, where was all this money before? Right. Uh, gassing up the PGA commissioner's jet so he could fly around. I mean, the money was there. It's not coming up from a cloud. It, yeah. Why does it take an upstart tour to also get a better schedule, more flexibility, and higher purses? Mm-hmm. I mean, players were not just leaving uh, for live golf for the money. They were leaving for the lifestyle and yeah. the benefits of playing on that tour, fewer events, um, you know, new venues, things like that. I mean, it's not just the same farmers open or the John Deere open playing at the same course over and over. I think players do like that, but at the same time, you know, they're going to start traveling around. There's all these different things going on, um, in terms of benefits for the players, um, with live golf. I, I have a couple points to make on this whole thing. Cause like, Richard, we could do a whole episode on this. And I think a lot of, uh, listeners are saying you guys love talking about this, but it is a huge story. If you if you Google Saudi Arabia and go to the news tab and hit top this week, about half of the stories are live golf. I mean, sometimes more than that. And so it is really what's driving the news. And that's not necessarily in Saudi Arabia's benefit. The first thing that I want to say about this is that um, the and it's sort of become a recent phenomenon. It's always it's always been there. It's always been in the background. But the Associate, association in the U.S. political discourse on Twitter, just the way people are talking about it as Live Golf and Trump, there's sort of like a marriage there. And so if you support Live Golf, you support Trump. And a lot of my friends know that, you know, I don't care for Donald Trump very much, to put it lightly. But, you know, so they say, oh, uh, you know, Live Golf is Trump's tour now. Like, what do you have to say about that? And it's like, I know I'm capable of liking something, you know, and not supporting Donald Trump. But 
it's not good for live golf to have that. I mean, you cut your customer base in the United States in half. You don't want people saying, Oh, like I'd like to support live golf, but I don't want to support Donald Trump. And I think it's a completely reasonable thing for people to say. Um, so, so that's that. And so, you know, as you said, Greg Norman may want to be a little quiet going on Fox news with Tucker Carlson. I don't know. And, and I guess Bryson DeChambeau did the same thing, but, um, actually uh, I'll I let would. you, I'll let you react to that. And I, I'm just, oh. I, you know, uh, Donald Trump is the most divisive figure yeah. in the United States of America. I don't think it, uh, you know, if you're a foreign country, I don't think it, it benefits you in long term to be a, a, a allied or identified with him. And that's just my opinion. And you don't need you him. Know, I mean, you know, may see it differently. Yeah. Um, and then and then, you know, second to that, it's talking a little bit about the PGA. You know, you you can't really if you were to go back and tell them and you were operating on behalf of live golf and you were to sort of put plant into the PGA commissioner's head, Jay Monahan and, and get him to do certain things to make live golf more successful. You would get him to do exactly what he's done. And the justice department is investigating him now for antitrust stuff. PGA is now being sued. I think that he has terribly mismanaged this whole situation from prohibiting players from leaving. I mean, he thought that he was protecting his tour, but you know, that was a huge mistake. And now it just seems like he is very weak and has walked everything back. Um, and, you know, I think that the net net here is we now have two tours. OK, you can watch both of them. You don't have to choose one or the other. So we have double the golf. Right. There's more space in both tours now for up and comers and new names and college players turning pro and amateurs turning pro. You have more space for more golf and I think the market's going to reflect that. I think there is a demand for more golf. There can be more than one tournament in a weekend. Um, and, you know, there are other series and other tours. The PGA was the gold standard. Now maybe you have a budding rivalry here. I mean, are, you know, if the best players from Live Golf and the best players from the PGA Tour faced off, it's a little bit like the Ryder Cup. You could have that every year. I mean, I just, I'm still bullish on Live Golf. I'm so all about Live Golf. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not a political statement. That's just, I, I just think this is cool.